Welcome to Your Town. I'm your culinary host, Chef Wendy Brody from Art of Food, and my guest today is Linda Ford. She's the president and CEO of Natividad Medical Foundation, and I have to say also a dear friend that I've known through the culinary field. <laughs> Welcome, Linda. Uh, all that you do, we've known each other on a very, what, delicious platform. <laughs> <laughs> we have. You do events, and we've connected on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping you'll um, share with me some of the things that we've done together and what I've what I've learned from you and <laughs> vice versa, but again, welcome. So. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here with you, Wendy. You are my favorite. Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> you. And I, I know I'm in good hands because you said you used to um, host and interview people. Do tell. Right, right. And I enjoy doing that because I learn so much about people, things that I otherwise probably would never have learned. So I, I enjoy educating myself. And I love to, to be educated by you because you are just the best chef I know. Well, you and your been. preparation is absolutely outstanding. I, I can tell that this is going to be an interview <laughs> about me. No fear. No, no that's fear. right. That, that's a really good idea. That, that, that that's easy. Mean Darn, you, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. picked it up. <laughs> but I was, um, well, we did um, a foundation event right. where we both went down to Greenfield. <laughs> so I want you to share okay. about that event. And I just got to be on the periphery oh. of the your wonderful um, Oaxacan group yeah. uh, that was yeah. contributing. But Right. Well, Your you turn. were you were amazing <laughs> to even do this with me. So, we at Natividad Medical Foundation have a service called Indigenous Interpreting Plus. And I don't know whether you know this, but there are actually 364 uh, different dialects, or excuse me, variances. I shouldn't say dialects. They're actually variances of languages. And what we found out at Natividad were there are very, very few interpreters for us that when people came in that spoke these languages, we, we couldn't find interpreters. And so nobody could understand them. Very difficult for our physicians and nurses to take care because you just couldn't even guess. It wasn't anything resembling Spanish or what one would think. So these languages from rural Mexico are really Indian languages, and some are 4,000 years old. Mm -hmm. And so we started an interpreting program because we thought if we can't find a program, let's just invent one and did it. And this is your brain. No, job. no, this is mine and a whole team. It was yeah, a team oh, of I people. Know it is, so it, no, really, seriously. And so um, we have some wonderful team people that came from um, actually working in the fields and are now trained interpreters. So we have, we serve our business now, um, Indigenous Interpreting Plus is serving hospitals, court systems, communities all over the United States. And we're very, very proud of this program. And I'm always interested in food, being a foodie, and I love art. And you were so kind because one day I called and said, Wendy, let's go down to one of our interpreters, actually the co-founder, and Helica Cedro's house, and let's learn how to make, were we making tamales that day, I believe? Yeah, and Tamales mole. from Oaxaca and mole. And so you and I set out on an adventure, and I'll never forget you. Um, your job that day was to cut banana leaves because yes. the tear, tear, tear excuse me, cut would yes. not be acceptable. Yes. And how many did you do that day, Wendy? Oh, uh, well, the event was for what, five or 500, six? 500, yeah. 500 people. You tour, 500. And, well, I had a lot of help, but 500. and. There is a special way, mm -hmm. and I, I get flumming up, I think. But this was for the tamales. Yeah, it was for an event oh. the, where we welcome all the indigenous communities to Natividad because they're, they're part of our new communities here. And as much as I love mole, and I have been to Oaxaca and tasted all kinds of, which I guess just means sauce, like mm -hmm. salsa, mm -hmm. and there's so many different varieties and versions. 
but the canned in the, or jarred in the mm -hmm. grocery mm -hmm. stores are anything but mm -hmm. what we experienced when it's made from right. raw. Yeah, there's actually five, in, in um, at least in Oaxaca City, that are, are mostly well known. The five different colors as well. Yes. Oh, so we made tell. one of those. But I remember I was in charge of garlic cutting. And <laughs> I pretty much got fired. <laughs> I, uh, Angelica told me right away I wasn't doing a good job. And I felt very badly. But I said, we weren't fast We enough. We were not. We were. <laughs> Wendy, you and I just could not make that job. But, and Angelica was very patient and kind. But um, it was it was an experience because I couldn't get over that she had the Kamal, yes. and she used her hands. They, she didn't use I would we would use wooden spoons or something yes. to stir, but she actually just kept her finger, just Moving. using her Moving. fingers, yes. and I I couldn't imagine doing that, and I thought it would just have been good to throw all the ingredients together. And let them in a food and, and, and a food processor <laughs> and let them cook. But she, the whole point was doing each flavor yes. and each ingredient. There were twenty-two. Took X amount of time, and they were never to be mixed up together. That each one had to be done. I know, it, and that it, was amazing to me. It was. I mean, the raisins and oh. the almonds and all these, mm. and the chilies, the bags yes. of chilies that she had hand seeded. And they were drying yes. outside. Everything yes. was hand done, yeah. handmade. It, it was it was just amazing, and the flavor amazing. was amazing. Oh, but yes. it, we had a funny day. That was we were we really laughed a lot because I couldn't imagine that you were doing five hundred banana leaves, and I I was flunking. Well, my I garlic. was fascinated that they come pre-packaged. Several, yeah. like I, I. So I was thrilled to know that little bit that uh, you can. Uh, you didn't have to go up the tree to get them. <laughs> right, up. right. Uh, well, luckily, yeah, we we weren't sent up the trees. Thank yes, goodness, we yes. would have really failed. Oh gosh, that, that was it really was really great fun. Day. And I think what I really appreciate is the amount of time and love and effort that is put in by some of the people that cook that are speaking the, uh, some of these rare languages, indigenous languages. But they just really put a lot of time and effort into their their cooking and they've been passed down the recipes have been passed down probably thousands of years what? and they're all local everything is from where wherever they lived in Oaxaca or Guerrero or wherever yes. is what the how they do the moles is based on what the local produce is right. or so forth what has always um, blown my mind is that we think of Mexican food and Chinese <laughs> yeah. food and yeah. a lot of the ethnic mm -hmm. foods as being really inexpensive and mm -hmm. being classically trained with the European style of mm -hmm. Escoffier yeah. procedures. Mm -hmm. um, there is so much, I, I don't want to say maybe more, but hands on oh. and how can this be a less expensive, oh, my it, goodness. it's about wow. the labor, it is. so many oh. hands that oh. isn't rewarded enough mm -hmm. to create these incredible cuisines. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mexican food and a lot of the Asian cuisines, I mean, it's really a, glo a global cuisine society mm -hmm. now that I'm just having fun learning more about. Yeah, um, and the preparation is what was amazing to me, yeah. the hand preparation. Oh, exactly. Um, then, after we got over that wonderful event, <laughs> you did one at your home that you, and I'm hoping you'll Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. you would research this mm -hmm. dish, and mm -hmm. I think it was uh, cassoulet. Ca well, oh no, you're talking a different one. Well, maybe it was the cassoulet, uh -huh. where you got the actual pot. Yeah, cassoulet. From, okay. So, that, as, as crazy as I am, because I'm yes. really into authentic. Yes. I had been studying, and I do this often because I like learning about the cassoulet because I love to cook, and I love things that require a lot of stirring. It's just very nurturing, and so I it's ended up finding yes. ended up finding in Castellandre, France, where the original cassoulet dishes were made oh, wow. in the pottery from the soil the ground in France. So I went there, luckily, I couldn't believe it, and actually bought a cassoulet, the original, orig one of the originals, that would, the, the pottery was there from probably the 1800s. They'd been doing cassoulet pots. And so 
we I was so lucky because you and others came for dinner and we I think I cooked oh, about wow. four days and um, it's four days of making the cassoulet with the ingredients is from France and the correct beans but it's so fun. Oh, yeah, I mean, so I, fun. I, just the memory of it has lasted and lasted. Good. And besides which, we got a little history from you, thanks mm. to your research and, and seeing what mm -hmm. the original um, cook was. Like. bowl. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was just yeah. crazy. Yes. Then it's fun. next up the list of culinary things is you did an event mm -hmm. um, with your wonderful singers right. and and the development of mm -hmm. that event. Mm -hmm. So do you want to expand oh, on goodness. that? We had name oh. different table names oh, and this gracious. was a foundation. And this event. was at your house and I think you were the only one that possibly could have pulled it off and made it so beautiful mm -hmm. because your house is amazing and we were fortunate enough that you allowed us to be there and, and shared with us. Um, but it was really about the Institute of Listening, or the Academy of Listening, which we have begun. And it's about learning to listen. And so what we do at the foundation, we have listening as part of the center of all the programs, meaning listening to the people that we serve and it's seeing what their needs are, and then basing our service upon that. Well, so that's really at the heart uh, of the uh, speaking mm -hmm. and the dialect mm -hmm. and and, yep. and how music plays mm -hmm. into and it. And we had like music. Continuing. Yeah, the music was fabulous. So um, they are two guys from Ireland, and they sing a cappello. They've been doing that since children. Their parents are probably two of the most one of two of the most famous people in Ireland. One is um, is a composer and a pianist. He's very well known. He just got um, a huge award in Edinburgh, and their mother is also well known. So um, they are just wonderful. So it was music and art and listening and silence. And it was just, I love the evening. And I think everyone, everyone yeah, did. Yeah, it, it had such a different rhythm mm -hmm. to them it did. because it was about all the senses. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just was so impressed. And, and in the hospitality business, and you with all the events that you have to fundraise um, with, we're all so used to a dinner <laughs> format yeah. and different courses mm -hmm. and so forth. So to structurally do something that really makes you think and mm. engage with others in a different way, and mm -hmm. I think we even changed Shares, not that that doesn't happen, but it was for every course we were sat with different people, yeah, and, and really to engage mm -hmm. with them through the listening and through the music. Mm -hmm. it, oh, it, it was really a fascinating concept, and it was a beautiful dinner you prepared. It was wow. amazing. And I don't even remember what I did. It was I amazing. remember all your parts, <laughs> not, not mine. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so you have been traveling, I know, mm -hmm. and um, so what other dishes and things are you working up in your mind that I mm. hope I get invited to? And, uh, well, I have really been, the last couple months, I, I've been living in my head in Ireland. So I, I can't explain it, but when I was in Ireland, I don't know, this year, probably a couple months ago, they had the best food. It used to be France, and it used to be actually China, I thought, had it was the best food I've ever eaten in China. But I have to say, Ireland was amazing with the local um, produce and the hams and the fresh markets and the cheeses and the, all the, um, the small artistry shops, artisans. Mm -hmm. Amazing food in Ireland which really surprised me. You know, it really doesn't surprise me huh. anymore because of the internet and how chefs are places like the aquarium mm. and they're cooking for solutions yep. events. Yep. They, yep. they brought over a woman and I could kick myself for not preparing mm -hmm. and remembering her name. But she ran a cooking school. In Cork? In, uh, yes. Okay, yes. I know her, yes. And I have her cookbooks. Oh, okay. Yes, and that's a lot of the recipes I had were her recipes. Anyway, when y globally mm -hmm. we're all sharing and learning mm -hmm. from each other 
Um, and Europe being so close and some of the great mm. French mm. masters and then all the different cooking mm. shows, it, it just expands our whole mm. horizon. Mm. So I, I really do feel there, whatever you love, you're going to be created, hmm. creative with. So yeah, um, it's it's interesting. But I find that a lot of the things, it tastes so good in the local origin, having it there rather than having it imported mm -hmm. to here. So I, I don't know. I think that do you find that too that you will have something in France and then you to have it here to try to duplicate it, it's just not the same. Well, or do you implore it, or how do you, how do you go about doing that? I think the real question is, because I get asked all the time, we had this favorite experience mm. and recipe from this place, mm -hmm. and oh, when we've got the recipe we can share with you, that people's experience of food goes far deeper than the dish and mm. the ingredients. Mm. It's what was the weather like, who oh, you were with. Oh, that's wonderful. What yeah. There's so many different mm -hmm. components mm -hmm. that give you this memorable mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. that really can't quite mm -hmm. be that's duplicated. So, that's so you, Wendy, and that's so good. <laughs> But, I, I, I mean, we have a mutual friend that I'm hoping to have on one time, Kevin Halsey, that mm -hmm. we just did a Meals mm -hmm. on Wheels mm -hmm. dinner with. And he did, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the theme was Indonesian food. Mm -hmm. And he took me to all these different mm. markets locally <gasps> he here. He did, lucky. And we, I, I said, I'm going to be your sous chef this year, even though I got the credit of being the the main sous chef at the table. We, I learned so much, and. He really makes a study of how to bring those flavors back that he tried. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. It You're can not be. crazy mm -hmm. by any means. But some things really, like cheeses from a certain mm -hmm. village, it's hard to import mm -hmm. that exact mm -hmm. one or, or wines mm -hmm. from that region. Um, anyway. Yeah, that's yes. uh, Kevin is amazing. That was one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. Was Kevin's? It was amazing. Well, well what was that? The Moroccan. Dinner? That was the one you and yes, I. Yes. Oh my goodness, oh, that yes. was amazing. Well, we both. It sounds to like be all invited. we do is eat. Yeah, now, you don't look it. I do, but. <laughs> Well, Linda, you'll have to come back <laughs> next time because I would love to. And thank you for having we, me. Oh, you were so, so a nice. Dear friend. Nice. Thank you. Thank you.